All right, good afternoon, everybody. Again, sorry for the technical difficulties, but we are going to get going on uh, our weekly app review. Today we are going to talk about an app called Proloquo to Go. Uh, this is a pretty popular app in the assistive technology world. Um, it, it, it's really one of the first things that made people realize how the iPad can be beneficial for people with disabilities. And I'm going to go ahead and open that up here. It's in my communication folder. Proloco to go is um, is is right here. It's the it's the the icon with the owl on it. We'll open that up and take a look at this. It's going to set up for me. It's going to load for me, and we have our communication device essentially. So what this is, what's nice about this. As far as apps go, it's fairly expensive. It's $190, but it's a basically a communication device. So it'll take and turn your iPad into a communication device, whereas in the past, you may have to carry around a Dynavox or something along those lines that would range from you know five to ten thousand dollars would be really expensive. So even at $190, this app is pretty cost effective for people that might need something like this to be able to use. Um, this is is. When, we, when you see anything promoting assistive technology use for students with disabilities or kids with disabilities using the iPad, most often they're going to go to something like this, this particular app more often than not, to show how well it works for kids. I think 60 Minutes did a, a story on autistic students that were nonverbal using Proloquo to go um, to speak uh, about six months ago. Um, if you go anywhere that has a demonstration iPad or iPhone set out, you're going to see this on there to demonstrate how it can be used as a communication device. So if a couple things. To be able to use it, you have to be able to isolate a point. You have to be able to use a touch screen. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to use it effectively. There's not really a great scanning option yet. Um, there's, there's some coming down the pipe, but there's not a great option available just yet. So you have to be able to point and touch. As we look at this, the way it works is we've got it set up here. There's file folders. You can see everything looks like a file folder on there. And as it looks like a file folder, what that means is if we touch one of these, it's going to uh, it's going to then take us to a category that's specified by the symbol or by the, the text there by both. So if I wanted to greet you guys, I could tap the Hi By file folder. When I tap that, it's going to open up a whole category on, on greetings here. And so what we're going to see is it's got all kinds of different greetings built into this. You, you see those four columns, four rows right now. Sometimes we are able to scroll up and see that there's a few other options down there as well. So if I wanted to see it, that scrolling may cause issues for some students if, if they um, if they're not real steady when they go to touch something, it may scroll on them. Um, but I'll show you how to adjust that also in a few minutes. So if I wanted to, to greet you guys, what I might do here is tap some of these symbols to build a, a sentence or build something to say up in this white space up here. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to tap um, hi, and I'm going to tap how are you. And then once I've built what I want to say, I'm going to go tap in the white space. And it's going to speak that out loud. So it speaks that out loud when we do that, and that's kind of how we would go about um, how we would go about creating sentences on here. And then if I wanted to say goodbye to you, I could, or if I wanted to say gotta go, I'm going to tap gotta go, and it's going to create that as a message by itself. I can tap up here, and it's going to speak that out loud for me. So that's that's basically how you use it. You touch and you you tap on these various boxes, and it creates these. Um, uh, it provides these these messages that are spoken out loud. Now, to get back to where we started, we can tap the home button down at the bottom here. So if you look at the bottom, this thing that looks like a house, that takes us back to the beginning, and that'll reset everything there. Up here, the X, that will wipe out the message box, and we can start going from here. If you look over here where there's two boxes, there's two boxes together, right? That if we if we tap that, it's going to show us three potential things that we could say. Right in the middle, we have recent. So if we wanted to say something that we said recently, we can tap that middle thing. It's going to show us, you know, last 15 minutes, last hour earlier today. I'll tap last 15 minutes, and it's going to show me the messages that I used then. I could tap one of those and, and, and say it again. I'm going to hit the recent button to go back here. 
and then I will go down and hit my double boxes again and this time I'll hit typing. So this really gives us unlimited access to speech as there's also typing capabilities here that provide word prediction for us as well. So if I wanted to type my name is Jim I could start typing with M and then I don't see a Y so I'll type Y again and hit space and if I hit N and I can see name in the word prediction here I'm going to choose name and then I see in the word prediction without typing anything else is and then I'll type my name in here as well and I see it there that corrects that for me and then if I hit the speak button here it's going to speak that out loud for me. So I've got the capability to type, I've got the capability to use these symbols, and these symbols are nice because they come as a preloaded vocabulary. There's two preloaded vocabularies you can choose when you set this up, and I'll show you where we can do that in just a second. Um, if we go back to the grid now, if we go down in the bottom corner where the settings are, where those gears are, the first thing you want to look at here is the user. You can have different users on this. So I have user 1 and Jim 2. Those are my two users. When you set up a user, you can use either the um, core word vocabulary, which is what we're seeing right now, which is used for students that can handle a little bit more uh, in-depth conversation, I suppose. The core 2, which I'll switch to Jim 2 here, the core 2 is more basic words for students that need just, you know, the, the very basic word. I'm sorry, it's not core to, it's called the um, the basic communication options. And that's kind of what we have here, the basics. You have your eye, you know, your wants, your needs, your food, drink, toys, that kind of thing. So those are your preloaded vocabularies. I'm going to go back to my original user here and have it switch back. Because I want to show you that, so it has all these built-in things. However, on top of that, it's pretty easy to add our own stuff into this as well. So to add anything, we would first choose the category that we wanted to add something into. And my go-to recently has been, um, let's say we wanted to go, uh, we were going to the football game this weekend and we wanted to be able to say things about Iowa that other folks might be saying in the crowd. We could tap on the sports category. And then we can hit the pencil here. If you look down here, the pencil, this is our edit key. This is our edit button. So we'll hit the pencil. And you'll see around the bottom we can have, we can add a button. We can add an action. We could add a folder. We could add it to primary vocabulary, secondary vocabulary, or we could put it in storage. We're just going to add a button right now. So I'm going to tap on add button. And here we're going to get, uh, the things that we, uh, we're going to get the capability to enter something into this. So I'm going to go first up to where it says text to speak. And I'm going to tap in there. And when I tap in there, it's going to bring up the keyboard for me. So we're going to go to the Iowa game this week. We want to be able to say go Hawks. So I'm going to type in go. And then I'll type in Hawks. I'll put an exclamation point in there as well. Now, underneath that is the label. The default for the label is to put in whatever you um, you have it speak. But I'm just going to make I'm going to change that just to have it say Iowa. And now I can tap on my image, which you see here. This is the image that's going to show up in our button. We can tap on that image, and we can do one of several things. We could we could lose air server there. Let's hope we can get that back. Oops. We must have got kicked out for a second there. Let's see if we can get Air Server back here. Sorry about that. Here it comes. Jenny, can we see that over there? Are you okay on the? We're good. Okay. So let me just maximize this again, and then we'll walk you through what we're looking at. So we can, uh, for our symbol, we can choose a symbol that's built into this proloquo to go. We could choose a picture on our iPad, or we could take a picture with our iPad. The other thing we can do is we can copy and paste an image from the internet. I'm just going to go ahead and hit choose a symbol. And when I choose a symbol, it's going to take me to the, the symbols that we have loaded in here. I'm going to go up to search and tap on the search area. I'm going to just type in Iowa. 
And there we see a nice Iowa Hawkeyes football helmet show up there. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on that Iowa Hawkeyes football helmet. And that's going to be added into my symbol now. Now I can change the type of word that is. So if I hit word kind, I can set the type of word that it is. You don't have to do that. I'm, I'm not going to at this point. We can choose a background color. We could choose a border color. We could change the color of the, the button if we needed to to make that stand out more or to make it so that somebody could, uh, could interact with it a little bit easier. But I'm not going to do any of that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and I'm going to tap Done. And now that I've tapped Done, you'll see my Iowa button has been added into my um, sports page. So if I go back down here and I hit Done, now this is active and I'm ready to go. So when I'm at the Hawkeye game and I'm tailgating with my friends, somebody says go Hawks to me, I can pull up my sports, I can tap on this, and then I can tap on the, the white space up here, and it's going to say go Hawks back to them. So we've got that where we can uh, create these buttons and be able to do it that way. Does anybody have any questions to this point? These are, this is your basic working of Pro Loquo to go. Um, that's how it's the add a button, that's how you access vocabulary, that's how you would go about using this. I'm waiting here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the home key and go back to the home page. Because now I want to show you some of the settings that we can do here. There's lots of different settings that we can get into to really customize this and, and make it work best for our students. So again, the settings, and this is pretty typical of apps. When you see something that looks like a gear or a couple of gears, that's where you're going to find your settings. So if I tap on the gears, we already saw it's set at user right now. If we go back to options, the first option here is appearance. If I hit appearance, what this lets me do is first um, operate the message window. So that message window is this piece up here, the white space. So we could show we could show or not show the messages. We could change the size or we could change the color, the way the text is represented up there. That, that doesn't, for most people, we're not typically changing something like that. The toolbars, we can change the size of the toolbars. That's what you see across the bottom. But this is where we really might see some option changing that we get into here. So right now, we're, we're dis displayed as a grid. We have all our images displayed as a grid. We can change the number of columns here. And what that allows us to do is if we have somebody that needs larger target areas, if we hit number of columns, and we go and we change it to one or two, all of a sudden you're going to see there our options get much larger. Along with that, though, we're going to have to scroll through to find what we're looking for on there. So we go back to settings. We can also change it in the other direction. If, if somebody has just, is their fine motor control is just fine, they can handle more images on the page, we could make it seven or seven or six columns or eight columns, and then you're going to see all of your options so you don't have to worry about scrolling. And you can add more to that and give them basically a seven by seven um, box there where they're going to have all kinds of options in there so they don't have to maybe go in between um, different categories quite as often. You can have more things per page that way. So that can be changed all the way up to a 12 by 12 column uh, approach there. I believe that's in the... Um, in the core word vocabulary and the basic word vocabulary that you get, um, you don't have quite as much flexibility in terms of how big you can make it. I don't think you can go all the way to 12. I'm not sure what the, the, um, the, the end point there is. So that's one of the things we can change in appearance. Another thing we can change in appearance is the look of the buttons as well. If we scroll down, we can change. I mean, most people don't really change this too much where they have the image and the label, or you could take the label off. You could just have the image. You could change where the label is, above or below. We could change the colors if we have to here. Lots of customizing options that we can get into with the, uh, with the buttons themselves. If we hit options and head back now, the second option that you'll see there is speech. With speech, there's a few things we can do. Here we can change the voice. You look up top, the voice. There, I have the male voice set. Heather is the female voice. Kenny is a child's voice. We can change to set the to, to equal what the user what we should expect from the user voice-wise if they were verbal. Um, 
You can also download Voices with Accents for free. I believe you can get Indian American English, uh, British American English, Australian American English. We can get that kind of um, we can get those accents involved. I don't believe it does it in different languages, but a different accent in English we can get. We can change the volume with which it speaks. We can change the speech rate. If we change speech rate, it's just normal is there. We can change it to fast, very fast, extremely fast, slow, very slow, extremely slow. Um, we can also personalize the voice. So this is, this is kind of a nice angle of this. We have it just at normal. We could make it higher pitched, lower pitched, deeper or higher, uh, depending on what the individual would like as well. Um, also, another key component here is pronunciation. So if we hit the pronunciation button, what this is going to let us do, for example, my last name is Stahoviak. If I were to plug in something that's Stahoviak, it would not pronounce it correctly. So I can hit the plus key here. And I can type in my last name as the original text. And then I'm going to go to the pronunciation. I guess I should probably make sure that that's capitalized, just in case that's an issue. We'll capitalize that. I'm going to go to the pronunciation, and I'm going to type in how we pronounce this phonetically. And then I'm going to hit speak, which is right here, just to hear if that's how, it's, how I want it to be. Close enough for that. It's going to be better than um, than what we would get if we just let it try and, and look at my name and say it. So I'm going to go back to pronunciations now. And now we see that that's added in the pronunciation guide. So when it runs into my last name, it should say it correctly. So let's go back into Proloco here. And let's go to uh, basics and about me. There's an option that says, my name is Jim Stahoviak. So if I tap that, and then I tap up top, it said it properly. So changing things in pronunciation can be real important to make sure that it's saying things properly. Let's go back into that speech in the settings real quick here. And another thing that I want to show you that is key is this speak message only. I have that turned on right now. If I were to turn this off, every time I touched a button, it would speak it. So even as I'm building, if, if I, the way I tend to use it, I would rather build the sentence first and then have it spoken. But if somebody wanted everything spoken as it was touched, you would simply turn this off. And then as soon as you touched a button, it would speak that out loud. So even while you're building something, it would speak it out loud. Um, you can also speak as you type set here. So as you're going through and typing something, you can speak it by letter, by word, by sentence, by paragraph. Lots of different options there. Um, we'll go back into options briefly here. Um, there's some options for word prediction. There's some options for grammar. I think uh, we got most of what I'd like to see there through speech. Let's just look at interaction. That'll be the last one we look at here. Though I guess we can point out that you can set restrictions on this so that students can and can't edit. Um, we can set privacy on here as well. Um, we can back it up. We can set a password so only certain people can use it. But I want to go to interaction. It's the last one I really want to point at here. Um, if you have a student that is either that, that struggles with holding down long enough or that um, may multiply, multi hit something multiple times, uh, quickly and you don't want it to register, we can set up so that they actually have to hold still for a certain amount of time before here, this is in the message. If we want it to speak, they actually have to hold for a certain amount of time. If we hit hold duration, you can see they have to hold for a second and then remove before it's going to actually speak for them or anything within that time frame. We could also set so that if we repeat, if we hit it twice, it will it'll stop what it's saying. Uh, that's important, but if we look down here toward the bottom, I'm going to scroll up to where it, see it says buttons. With the button area here, hold duration on the button. Again, if we, we can make it so the student has to hold for a certain amount of time and then remove, and that time frame can go from anywhere from half a second to, I think, 10 seconds. Um, we can allow for repeats, but if we have to be careful if we have a student that has tremors or that hits things multiple times, that might be when we turn it off so that we don't get repeats. But what we could also do with repeats 
is we could hit a repeat delay and say that you know there has to be a one second uh, time between the hits before we're going to allow a second hit, and that's going to help prevent somebody that might hit things multiple times quickly from getting multiple things put down on their uh, or in their communication device. So th I mean that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. That's that's a brief intro to ProLoquo to Go, one of the more popular communication apps out there, um, and really a powerful tool for any kid that's nonverbal or that might struggle with communication. Does anybody have any questions about ProLoquo to Go? Well, I'm waiting for you to type something there. I will tell you that um, I'm going to stop sharing this. We will not have one next week. We'll not have an app review next week because um, Jenny and I are going to be going to Bettendorf High School to do something for the day on Wednesday. The following week, we will not have one for thank the Thanksgiving week either um, because we're both going to be out of town. So we'll pick this up again the week after Thanksgiving. We'll start looking at um, we'll start looking at some of the uh, some other apps and, and keep an eye on our website for what those apps are going to be um, within the coming weeks. And again, you can review any of these previous app reviews or any of our other webinars right from our website, education.uiowa.edu slash iCater, and then hit the webinars tab and you'll be able to find things there. So I'll throw it out there one more time here. Is there any questions? from anybody. It looks like, where do you get the other symbols to add? Well, let me pull that back up here and share that one more time. The other symbols to add, you can do that multiple ways. There is a whole bunch of things already built into this. So I'm going to go back into my Air server here briefly, and I'm going to show you, uh, let's say we wanted to edit something. Um, we'll go back into our Sports tab, and we'll hit the pencil to edit. So once we add a button, again, there's multiple ways. If I tap on the image area here, I tap on, I can choose a symbol. Those, if we hit choose a symbol, we're going to have access to things that are already built into ProLoquo. And they have a huge symbol library in there. Um, you name it, and there's probably a symbol for it. If we wanted to have a symbol for the president, for if we were talking about the election from yesterday, and we type in Obama, we're going to get his whole family in there. Uh, you know, if we typed in you know, Romney, uh, just to be fair in the it, when we're talking about these things, there's Mitt Romney. But you can see as I type, start typing different things in there, there's lots of symbols built in. There's thousands of symbols built into this. So that's one place that we can get symbols from. Another, if we found some on the web, we could save them to our image images on the on the um, or our picture folder on the iPad and if we hit choose a picture instead of choose a symbol it's going to give us access to the camera roll on the iPad and we can choose camera roll and we can pull any of our images from the camera roll and put them into our uh, into our symbol space as well and the other thing we can do is we could take a picture directly. So those are the three areas we can get the symbols. I think what you were asking basically is where we got those extra symbols like the Hawkeye helmet, and that comes already built into ProLoquo. Did that answer your question about symbols? Great, great. Any other questions I can answer for anybody today? All right, well, if not, I appreciate you hanging around and waiting while we ran through some technical difficulties, and have a great Thanksgiving, and we'll see you guys in a few weeks, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about, I think we're going to talk about read to go from Bookshare in a couple weeks. So have a good, uh, have a good Thanksgiving, everybody.